Hello beautiful earth angel, my name is Joanna. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Team Joanna. I'm just gonna turn down the music. Um, if you are a visitor, if you're first time here, um, welcome, I hope you stay. I hope you like what you hear. And uh, if you could, or if you would like to click on the subscribe button, that would really help me uh, spread these messages. So thank you for coming uh, to this space. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much. Uh, it is for you. Why do this without you? Uh, there would be no Team Joanna. There would be um, no Joanna the Healer. So thank you for bringing me here every single time. And it is a platform uh, that um, I use in order to spread the message. What's the message? Uh, essentially, uh, the message is uh, to realize your own power and your own strength. So my intention for you today is to give you just that, to give you information that will hopefully help you shift your perception of you and therefore reveal your strength and your power. And the moment you reveal something within you that you previously didn't know existed and it's something powerful, uh, from that moment on, your life changes and the change happens as a result of shifting of awareness, which is shifting in consciousness. So my uh, job, if you will, or my intention and my passion um, as Joanna is to help you shift um, your consciousness. I have really interesting energies with me today. And just like last week, it, it feels very mysterious. I actually feel like I am one foot in the physical and one foot in some other dimension. It feels like I am uh, doing this thing, like I'm trying to balance both. So let's see how this goes. The energy is very powerful, it's very beautiful. If I was to give it more uh, words, it's very soft, but very solid at the same time. And um, it feels very feminine. There is not one specific being that I'm connected to right now, but the energy feels very feminine. Now, it makes sense to me because um, uh, based on the information I have, there is a lot of uh, feminine frequency pouring through to us. Um, I guess I could say it in that way, um, globally. So with that said, let's see what spirit beings want me to talk about uh this is for week of may 18th so it's a weekly uh, pulse for week of may 18th but do keep in mind that energies cannot be boxed in a box just like we can't and um these energies are flowy and continuous so if uh you do not recognize the significance of these uh, messages in the upcoming week, you will uh, absolutely see it down the road. So the message, these messages are not for a specific week. You know, you get it. I trust you know uh, how this works. So the word that was given to me earlier on today was incubation. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. What is it to incubate? It's to keep, actually, I didn't look up the word, but when you look at a, when a baby is born prematurely, for example, it has to be in an incubator. And the idea of incubation, therefore, means uh, something is not quite ready yet. Something is not quite strong enough, um, uh, healthy enough, resilient enough. Uh, um, there's other words that I could use, but I can't quite get them. It, in short, Something is happening, but it is not ready yet to be manifested. And um, incubation also means taking care, being gentle. If you think again of the metaphor of baby in an incubator, it needs uh, it needs a lot of tender, loving care because it's 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 very vulnerable. So the other part is. Um, incubation also speaks to me of vulnerability. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, I have been feeling vulnerable for quite some time, in particularly with regards to how I express my work. And that's because the road seems to be shifting and turning. And just when I know how I'm gonna work, boom, there seems to be a change. And you may feel this way, 
in your life in some area, whether it's job, whether it's job related, relationship related, whatever it is, or your future, your focus, your future focus, you may have noticed that it's your focus is shifting, but also your destination seems to be shifting. And that's because when I look at this energy, it's not straight as an arrow, it's windy, like a windy road. Uh, and therefore, it may present a lot of confusion. So um, we are being incubated or we are in an incubation stage where something is not quite ready and we're in that vulnerable space where we are growing and maturing. And, um, and um, as a result of that, we are also, um, word please, um, not fragile, we're not fragile, we are sensitive and we are vulnerable. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we, 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 we want to spring forward and it's like, ah, you can't just yet. Now this may very well represent the energies with respect to the virus. Um, and it seems that some places at least are trying to move on into what was, although we will never move back to what was because everything has changed. And so has our thinking for many people. Um, but we are slowly, slowly returning to some sort of norm. And again, our norm will never be the same as the norm before this virus. So uh, maybe we want to go and do things, but we are still being held up. And that's the incubation process. So now that makes sense to me why the energy would feel that way. And um, it, it doesn't feel very harsh, it feels very soft. And again, the, 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 the feminine energy is what I get more than anything. And that speaks to me about nurturing, nurturing. We are being nurtured. Uh, now, I know that some of you will say, this does not feel like nurture. This feels like torture, um, no argument there. Uh, but energetically speaking, the nurture means we are being supported even though we may not see it, know it, or uh, it may not look like it based on what we are seeing with our 3D eyes, with our 3D perspective. Uh, but there is no question in my mind that we are being gently, sometimes not so gently, pushed forward to a new norm. And this is very, very significant. Um, the I got so many amazing analogies today and metaphors. The metaphor that came up right after right after the word incubation is the metaphor of a frog. So frog is uh, cleansiness. It's clearing, and many of us have been clearing our path. And for many of us, the path has been clearing for us. Therefore, um, not really we are not really in charge, the universe seems to be in charge, but it's all for, for the most part, uh, for the better, it's just that we can't see it yet. But the, the, uh, the in, that's why the incubation is so important because as we are in this vulnerable state and we are being, uh, we are nurturing ourselves for those of us who have stayed home, there was a lot of focus and determination, well, maybe not determination, but a lot of focus sometimes um, um, by necessity to look at stuff, to look in the mirror. And as we look in the mirror, we reflect back and we have been reflecting some things back that we didn't want to see or we didn't see. And as a result of this reflection, things are starting to shift and turn. And um, what they're talking about is the idea of polarization. We are very polarized, right? And we are moving more into a, a unified consciousness. So polar, polarization and unification are the extreme opposites. And um, part of why I feel this gentleness energetically is because it takes a lot of work, effort, determination, and quite frankly, grit to move from feeling and being polarized to more in a space of oneness and unification. And um, huh, very interesting. So that's essentially where we're moving. But yes, that's makes, that, that makes sense. We are moving to 
higher grounds where we are able to see more and by seeing more or through seeing more we are able to realize certain things we haven't realized before and consciousness shifts occurs so uh, no question about it that this is a period of adjustment so in terms of the clearing um, you may actually be clearing stuff out of your body coughing things up interestingly I have been coughing stuff up in the last two days and I'm thinking what is that never it's new to me so you might be coughing st some stuff up you might have some difficulties with throat and digestion and um, and digestion is because fire, fire, spirit, your fire is being upregulated. And um, when we go through this process that we are going right now with all these things happening in the world, there is so much more happening energetically, spiritually, spiritually and in um, uh, dimensionally where we have no awareness to that is... Um, so powerful and will make such a powerful statement down the road but because we have no access to it um, and we are preoccupied with what we are seeing in the physical world we we may not fully appreciate the the, uh, the 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 difference or the change that's happening and um, even as i'm saying this to you i'm purely channeling what i'm being shown and i have no idea what the work behind the grab behind the scenes is but i know it is and my attention is being drawn on it and it's being highlighted to as if to let you know that even though you are going through these crazy times and difficulties and adjustments there is a whole lot of good happening in the background in a background meaning um um on your subconsciously energetically uh, consciousness wise there's a lot of good things that are coming out of this and me as Joanna I'm hearing myself talk and I'm going okay well that's good to know even though I felt that um, it's nice to uh, get it confirmed I also saw some of us either eating mindlessly or uh, eating without thinking and um, or without enjoyment so for some of you there is a message to slow down when you are eating or be more mindful what sort of food not only food but what sort of food do you put in your body and perhaps this is to do with digestion so for some of you if you've been having upset stomachs or difficulties with digestion uh, notice if it's possible uh, notice, notice if it isn't connected to you eating on the run, for example, or eating mindlessly. And um, I feel a lot of us are in culture or come from culture where eating is almost a nuisance. It's not as enjoyable um, sometimes or as it used to be. We just don't, not everybody obviously, but we don't, we don't put the same emphasis on, 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 on looking at food as just part of uh, enjoyment. A lot of people use food as a way to stuff their feelings and stuff their emotions. And um, I feel that many of us have the opportunity to, okay, have the opportunity to shift the way we have uh, our relationship with food. Very interesting. So, and I've heard this before, but what's coming in is over the next little while, and for some of you, you may have had ha had it happening already six months or so, your habits in terms of what your desires are in terms of food and eating is slowly changing. For some of you, it's going to change and it's changing already. For some of you, it's, you're, it's not happening right now, but it will later. And as we shift vibrationally, our desire for choices of foods will change accordingly but again my logical mind says that makes sense because we crave we crave when we are in a healthier state we crave healthier foods have you ever noticed that when you feel crappy you want to eat crappy food not always of course but that seems to be uh, that seems to be the the, the, the trend and that's because uh, we're not looking for food we're trying to satisfy our emotional need at the time so I like this little twist on on food choices um, I think everybody knows this already but for whatever reason I'm be asked to say to uh, pay specific attention to foods that are green in a positive way 
uh, whether it's green juices, wheat, green, wheat grass, uh, green smoothies, green, green, a lot of green, a lot of green. Now, as we know, green is a healing color. Uh, but for whatever reason, in the next few weeks, uh, green, diet opulent in green. Now, if you think about it, if you have a diet that's opulent in green, you're eating healthy. So perhaps a segue from eating not so healthy to eating healthy is really to just have this one thing in mind uh, uh, and others, but this one thing in mind, more green on my plate. So the more, that's interesting. Never thought about it that way, but that makes perfect sense. When you have a plate and the more green stuff it is on your plate, aside, unless it's candy, of course, we don't, you don't want that kind of green, uh, fresh, high vibrating foods, the more green on your plate, the fresher and the better for you. So um, interesting tidbit, thank you for that. So if you have issues with digestion, those may pop up in the next little while. Uh, slow down and smell the roses. And I actually, when I received this message, message I, I said, isn't, haven't we slowed down? Like we really had to be slowed down. And the answer was for some yes, for some no, but the slowing down is not action, it's the thought process. Too much thinking. I have not been sleeping well for quite some time, but in the last week, it's like I wake up in the middle of the night, like several, four or five times, and it's like I, I literally get mad at my mind. And I literally said the other night, enough already. <laughs> and it's 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 like it's relentless, relentless. It's like it's it's sped up and it's not allowing me to sleep. So it leaves me kind of hanging between the wake state and the and the sleeping. And it's I can't get full rest. But I also understand that that's part of the thinking that's changing and our thoughts are being upregulated. I have no idea what that means. Uh, light quotient, light quotient. Uh, okay, so our thoughts are being upregulated. It's to do with light quotient. I'm asking what's a light quotient? It's um, how much light can you hold? So the more light we hold in our cells, which is what we are being prepared for. Thank you. Okay. So we are being prepared. Ah, got it. So that's the incubation period. We are essentially being prepared to hold more, more light. That's brilliant. And in order to hold more, hold more light, we have to be a vehicle that is strong enough to hold that light. If we can't hold the light, then it will, I don't know what it will do, but I guess the body physically won't be able to, to, to deal with it very well. It'll burn through, I don't know, energetically. But in order to hold more light, we have to, at least to some extent, considerable extent, um, let go of the negativity. We know that, that makes sense, okay. And it's not so much that we cannot have a negative view on something, but whether we stay in the energy for long periods of time. And right now, it's obvious there is a lot of fear in the world, obvious reasons. Perfectly normal reaction, nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong with anything. The feel, there's nothing wrong with any feeling. It simply is. But what do we choose to do with it? Whether we own it, assume it, allow it to um, affect us in negative ways, that will then depend how much light we hold. So by all these fearful components coming up, give us opportunity to really make it clear within ourselves what it is that we truly, truly believe in. And when we begin the process of that, we begin to slowly but surely let go or separate ourselves 
from whatever is fear-based. I hope this is coming through because I'm literally channeling. So the long story short is we are being prepared to hold more light. Light, where there is light, there is no darkness. So the more light comes in, the less darkness there is. But what that darkness, and I don't mean as bad, but just to give it a, 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 a meaning. Uh, but you don't get rid of darkness because it's energy. You transform the energy. So it is the transformation of energy that we are going through right now. And depending on how much we are willing to transform our beliefs and our thoughts, particularly as they relate to fear-based thinking, will depend how much light we are able to eventually hold. And the more light we hold, the more uh, light we uh, project out. So if you think about each person holding a lot of light and there is billions of people walking around with a lot of light, what happens to consciousness? It reflects the individuals holding the light. I love this explanation. Thank you for that. What this essentially means is ridding of or transforming, better language, transforming our limitations. Now, this is not just for this week. I mean, we've been going through it for a while, but that's what's being presented. Um, I also felt that majority of us are still not able to see future. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're still not able to see it. And we're not able to see it because this growth is happening. And until, it's not even until, we can't see it because this growth is happening. And as we go through this massive shift and change and rapid growth, many of us will not be able to see exactly where we are going. It's almost like we're moving through a fog. And just because we're in a fog doesn't mean things are not changing. It's just, it just the fog is still there, so you cannot see clearly, but soon the fog will pass and you will find yourself on, quote unquote, the other side. But it's not that there is other side, it's the other side of the fog, which is, what is fog? Fog is something that obstructs the view, but it's not a thing. You can't, well, I guess it could be, it's gases, I guess, or, you know, um, atmospheric things, but it's not something you can hold. So it is energy. We can look at it as energy. And eventually that energy will pass. And on the, to be on the other side of the fog is to see much more clearly. And that's the shift of consciousness. Uh, it may feel a little bit like we are waking up from sleep. And I think I've said this before. Um, I've had this feeling few times and I must say it's an odd feeling. It is, it is, it's a little bit like deja vu. It's different, but it's a little bit like deja vu where, it, where it, you know it, it's, it's in your body. It's, it's not a question of, am I, it's like you, when you have a deja vu, vroom, you've been there before. Um, so it's a similar thing. It can feel a little bit unnerving because momentarily you're not sure which reality you are in. And that can happen in various degrees. To some, it's going to be very potent. To some, it's going to be just a little, huh? Um, I've had a um, bunch of these moments in the last week. So, and I think I've said this before, I've asked myself several times, am I going crazy? And then I just hear, well, that depends what you think crazy is. And I remember last year, when I said to myself, I'm going crazy, I heard them say to me, consider crazy your normal. Consider crazy your normal. So, um, interesting times, absolutely interesting times. The idea of a grass was presented to me. So when I get communication, it's sometimes with words, but rarely, it's metaphors, symbols, it's like a whole language. And I thought about grass and I thought, I better look up if, if there is a meaning behind grass or what is there, a pop, what's the meaning out there for grass? And long and behold, isn't it interesting that grass stands for interconnectivity, which is opposite of separation. 
And I thought, oh my God, that makes perfect sense. We're in a process of growth and this growth is about moving from the space of separation more into space of unification. And that is the actual space. That's the, that's the change of consciousness. Let me go through some of the cards that I have for you because they're beautiful. The energy that is around us is this. Um, do I have the box here? I don't have the box here, but it's called Soul Cards. Number one, some of you have asked me. Soul Cards 1. Um, you can get them on Amazon. Everybody will feel, well, may feel something slightly different. So whatever you feel from this card, it's beautiful. What I hear is receive. So we are in a space, we are in a receiving space, the nurture space, the mother space. The mother, the uh, not mother, the feminine. Yeah, mother, feminine. Um, I also hear, come home, come home, come home. So this energy, it's almost as an invitation to follow your guidance, inner guidance, to come home. Now, what does home mean? To me, coming home meaning means coming to a place of a certain understanding. To me, coming home means letting go of all the illusions and realizing who I really am. It's not even realizing, it's just embodying the knowingness of who I am, who you are, who we are, which is light. So I will use that interpretation for coming home. And that's a very powerful energy. It's a very powerful energy. I don't know about you, but I've had, uh, it hasn't happened for a while, but last couple of years, I've had this feeling that I had moments and there were days of these moments where I had this longing for going home, but it wasn't home on earth. It was like home. It was just this longing, but I was not depressed. I, was, uh, I wasn't any of those things. Everything was wonderful, but it's just, I had that, I had that feeling of going home. And um, some of you may feel that over the next little, little, little while. It's a real feeling like you want to go home, but it's not so much that you don't want to be here. I mean, yes, for some of you, maybe, but it's not that you don't want to be here. It's not that anything is necessarily wrong. There is just this yearning for being home. But being home really means your full realization. I feel that to be realized is to be home. I like that to be realized is to be home. When, for example, your physical part of you is done, when you as a soul has have realized certain things about yourself in the physical body, then your body, then you're ready to go. And you say thank you very much to your body and you move on. Very interesting. So this is an energy to receive also. It feels a bit like a passive energy, not so much a lot of movement. That doesn't mean that we won't be doing our things, we won't be doing our jobs, we won't be doing, uh, you know, we won't be um, doing what we have to do in order to live. No, it doesn't mean that, but it doesn't feel to be very focus driven. It, it feels more contemplative. And I guess that goes very well with the word incubation. So there isn't a lot of fast movement it's more of a receiving, but fast movement like chariot, for example, that's a very masculine energy. This feels to me like a very feminine energy. And by the way, uh, the swan came up as an additional symbol and swan to me is a, is a feminine energy and creativity. Uh, this is also what underlines uh, the next few weeks coming through, creativity coming through and seeing yourself, seeing ourselves very, very clearly. Okay, so what's happening as a result of this beautiful energy to us. This is what the us, us is represented by. So again, all of you can look at the card and see what you feel. What I get off right away is um, there's a split that's happening. And as you can see here, and the split is in the mind. And that's why I feel some of you, including myself, may question 
whether you're going crazy. But it's like parts of you are being chipped away. And um, it may feel like you're losing your mind. Seriously, it may feel like you're using your, losing your mind. But if you're asking yourself if you're using your mind, chances are you're not losing your mind. But there is a, there is a, there is a separation that's happening. And the separation is the old you, except the old you isn't going anywhere. It is being transformed. And um, you could see here that the split could be happening as a result of lightning. Now, what does lightning do? Lightning usually, you know, it hits something with full force. Um, and when it does, it often transforms whatever it hits. So there is a lot of powerful energies around that will um, essentially help us move more towards our unified selves. And I'm hearing, tell them what that means. For example, for example, it means um, seeing the world from the perspective of unified one, unified whole versus perspective of separation. So seeing yourself as part of everything that is versus separate. And that doesn't mean we don't have opinions. It doesn't mean we don't have judgments. It doesn't mean we don't have discernments. It doesn't mean we don't have our identity. It, does, it doesn't mean any of those things. It simply means we are choosing to look at the world from a unified space or a unified perspective. When we fundamentally know we are one, then we also know that anything we do affects the whole. And that essentially is the shift of consciousness. And that's the split. The split of uh, one for oneself versus unified whole. When the, when the virus first came out at the beginning of March, and I remember it so clearly, I was at the gym and I was getting all these messages about what this means to us. And one of the things that they showed me was that this is eventually going to produce an environment where many, not all, but many people will begin to form smaller communities. And eventually we will have a system set up. We will set up a system where um, we, will, we, will, we will, as a form of exchange, we will give things from what we have while getting something from somebody else, a barter, almost like a barter method. And I don't know if it's going to be in this lifetime for me personally, but there, that kind of thinking or consciousness, it seems to be developing over the next, looks like 10 years or so, which means a lot smaller communities, which means, you know, taking care of a community, uh, being part of a smaller community. It's, it's inclusive. It's very inclusive. That's very interesting. Basically going down to our, going, getting back to our roots, what's really important. What's really important. Family, friends, home, shelter, of course, food, peace, contentment, right? And if we remind ourselves what's important, then we can focus on it. And right now there's a lot of distraction. We're being distracted in various ways. Doesn't mean things are not happening, not at all. But again, what will we do with this information and how will we let this information affect us? Now, some of you have been affected by this virus in absolutely horrible ways. Uh, there is no point in denying that. None whatsoever, none whatsoever. And that in itself has changed you permanently. I am sure of that. I am sure of that. So going forward, things will not be the same. But it is up to us to decide what will be instead of the old. Do we accept what's decided by our beliefs, old beliefs, society, or do we create our own reality and see how that fits with the rest of the world, right? Being part of unified whole also means that we 
allow other people to have their own experiences. We don't hold them hostage for not believing what we believe in. We understand that it's part of their journey without saying who's right, who's wrong, because who knows? And everyone is on their own individual path. So if you've been trying to convince somebody of something that, you know, they should really look into this because their life would be better if they do, um, introduce the idea, whatever it is, but then let it go. Don't try to shove it in somebody's throat. Um, especially what's going on out there right now. There's a lot of stories. There's a lot of stories in every angle. It's a, it's a, it's an information overload. If you can, if you can, if you can manage it's not easy, but if you can manage to hear whatever you're hearing based on what you're exposed to and not really attach yourself into anything in particular, if you can just imagine doing that, that would be a huge, huge, huge bold step. Because eventually what happens with time, things eventually fall away and the truth stands. And I hear the truth always stands tall. So the truth will always be revealed sooner or later. And I actually don't know what I'm talking about. I have a feeling I'm talking about some interesting things, but they're not giving me too many details. But I believe those of you who are meant to hear it, you will know what this means for you. Okay. The card of empowerment. Gee, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. None whatsoever. What does it mean to be empowered? What does it mean to what does it mean to you to be empowered? What does it mean to be in your power? It may mean different things for different people. Certainly understanding your power or accepting your power. Is, 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 is one of the first things. And we're all powerful people, whether we know it or not. In a human form, some people are more powerful than others in various ways. But at the end of the day, we all come from the same spot, we're from the same space. We all come from this um, frequency that is all that is. There is no label on it. There's no containment. Some call it God. Some call it universe. They, there's, I'm sure, another 40 different names. This card came up, I know, in the last few weeks. So this is us and our roots. We are um, rethinking we are contemplating, as this picture suggests. We are looking at our roots. Do some roots serve us? Do some roots don't serve us? Is that the way to say it? Not, the, yeah, you get it. And what do you get from this card? Just notice what do you get from this card? What I see here is that as a result of this uprooting, if you will, something new is emerging. But again, that makes perfect sense. Um, I see a squirrel here. I don't know if some of you do. I see a squirrel. So look up what the symbolism is of a squirrel. I actually don't know. Um, I know squirrels are gatherers and all that kind of stuff, but there's a, it'll be interesting to see what the significance is of a squirrel in terms of spiritual totems. But as a result of our uprooting and rerouting, something new is born. Something new is coming out. If that wasn't enough, here we have a butterfly. That is symbol for transformation.
we are transforming ourselves. We are in transformation. And going back to what I said at the very beginning, to put it in a certain perspective, we are transforming in order to be able to hold more light. To hold more light means to um, embody higher consciousness. Consciousness is light, it's frequency. So we are again being prepared, almost like soldiers, uh, warriors, spiritual warriors, if you will, um, to hold more light. Interestingly enough, look at the luminous warrior. This is what we aspire to. So what is a luminous warrior? He sees things from higher perspective. He doesn't focus on negativity. He focuses on good, on higher perspective, on unity versus separation. This is what we are all moving into. We are all luminous warriors, like it or not. And that means we have to be empowered in order to see things very clearly. The card of counsel has shown up, I believe last week or a week before that. And again, this is a very strong message saying that we are being guided by higher beings. Some of these beings are from different dimensions as in different, um, I almost wanna say civilizations. I've talked about this before. And some are uh, not, uh, not, not bodied spirit, just spirit energy, but there's no body. Call it angels. This is called the council. The council of light, perhaps, for some of you. I believe the council of light, which is a, a whole bunch of intergalactic beings, are here to help us move through this transition. So they are, in essence, working with all of us luminous warriors, or as I call us earth angels, same thing, okay? Is there anything that I need to say? I just heard, unleash your power. Unleash your power. Unleash your power. What's power on a leash? Power on a leash cannot be, can, is, is, is limited. It cannot fully be expressed. Unleash your power. I like that. I really like that. I think that's all I have for you guys. I really like the, how this flew. If you would like to have a healing session with me uh, to help you move through some of these energies, or if you would like to have other sessions with me, um, I would be honored that information is down below. Of course, if this doesn't make sense to you right away, listen to it, to it some other time. But uh, I believe the way the messages come through, they can pretty much uh, connect with anyone who is going through something consciously, right? Uh, but do comment what you're thinking and how it affects you. I love, love, love hearing that. And I feel like there's, yes, if you would like to be part of the uh, private Facebook page, um, that link is down below. Uh, you get to ask questions. We have, we converse. I respond to some of your questions and comments. So there's a more of a relationship, more of a closer relationship that we have there, closer community. So if you would like that um, to be part of our group or part of our team, uh, that link is down below. And um, without uh, further ado, thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful week of May 18th, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.